In recent weeks, we've seen Ollie showing just how efficient and aerodynamic it's possible to get on a bike to bring incredible speed within reach of not just World Tour professionals. We actually saw it first in his hour record, and then recently he took a tricked out Orbea time trial bike and rode 10 miles in just 19 minutes and 55 seconds, averaging over 30 miles per hour. It's a similar milestone in metric, of course, a truly memorable 48.28 kilometers per hour for 16.09 kilometers. Now, at this point, I hear some of you cry, well, that's all well and good, but a track bike and a time trial bike are such specialist bits of kit. Definitely not do-it-all bikes, and in fact, the ultimate embodiment of N plus one. So we got wondering then, given all the amazing advances in bike tech and all the marketing jazz that goes with it, just what's possible on a road bike these days? Well, we're gonna find out, and yes, I've drawn the short straw. The plan is to take a road bike, a very, very nice road bike, but one that could have been plucked straight from a road race or a well-heeled Sunday group ride. Then sprinkle some extra magic dust over it and see how it and by extension I fare over the same 10 mile or 16.08 kilometer long time trial course in South Wales that Ollie rode on his time trial bike. It's the R1017 in time trial let's speak, or a massive main road that you wouldn't ever want to ride on in a million years to everybody else. Riding at 10 miles in less than 20 minutes on a road bike certainly has precedent. In fact, the first rider to do so did it back in 1980. We believe it was Dave Aikham, a rider who then went on to become a key domestique, Francesco Moser. In fact, he helped him to win the Giro d'Italia in 1984. Now, clearly, a rider who becomes a loyal domestique for one of the legends of the sport has to be a seriously good athlete in his own right. So the question, I guess, is has technology improved enough over the years to mean that this is now a possibility for me? Clearly, I'm gonna need some help here. So off to GCN's king of aero, Mr. Bridgewood. Dr. Bridgewood, Dr. Bridgewood. Right, Ollie and I are at our local bike racing circuit. You're gonna give me a few much needed pointers in just a sec, but before you do, God, give me the bad news, man. How hard is this gonna be? Clearly, Filippo Ganna could go 30 mile an hour for 10 miles on a shopping bike, but for a Well, actually, mortal, he couldn't. Could he not? No, it's, it's really, really hard what you're trying to do. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've actually calculated what it would take if you were on like a, a sort of shopping bike. Go on. You're talking about 600 watts. Okay. For 20 minutes, not even Ghana can do that. No, he can't, can he? All right, and what about on a normal road bike then? Not optimised, just the kind of thing that you'd pluck straight out of the tour? So, no, well, normal road bike, you're looking more like 400 watts. Okay. But with some tweaks, if we can get your drag coefficient low enough and a few other bits and pieces on the bike as well, I think we can get it more down to sort of 370 watts. 370. Mm. It's almost ballpark. What kind of things then are we looking at optimizing? Without question, the most important thing is going to be your position. Okay. We need to sort that out. So and, and then what and then what you're wearing and what you're putting on. Okay. So that's the most important thing. Bikes does make a difference. So when this is such a difficult challenge, like you're gonna need an aero bike, okay. you're gonna need deep wheels, you're gonna need fast tires and a few other bits and pieces to help along the way. They're the main things. Okay. But getting me aero. Yeah. Principally. All right. How aero are you feeling? Well, I mean, not very. I've well, never thought of myself as a particularly aero kind of guy. So, um, if I get kitted up, do you want to give me some Yeah, let's see. Pointers? Let's see how you're going. All right. Bear in mind, I, I was a mountain biker back in the day, so, you know, that kind of position is quite comfortable. I reckon you can get aero. All right. It's crossed. Right, well, you need to shave your legs. Serious? Yeah. yeah. How many watts? It, it's, it's, worth, it's worth a couple of watts. Is it? Yeah. All right, okay. It's been measured. Um, so that's that's not a great start. But you are looking pretty aero now. Thanks, mate. Suit looks great. You've got yeah. aero socks on, something yeah. you swore you'd never do. But <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but we've, we've converted you to the dark side. They do make a difference. Other big things, though, 
One of the biggest things, tires. People will overlook, but we've got the uh, Pirelli TT tires on here. Yeah. That's eight watts over the normal like P zeros yeah. for the pair at 45 kilometers an hour. And you're going to be going faster than that, so it's an even bigger saving. Latex tubes in there as well. Nice. Another sort of five, six watts for that. So already we're getting it down. Yeah. Into more manageable terms. There's 38 bars on this bike. Yeah. You know, most people ride like 40s to 50s, but it helps you just get that frontal area in. Yeah. Yes, and we've got we've got the nice deep vis vision, eighty ones on there as well. Can start, tell me more. I need more savings, Ollie. Well, um, I'm not anywhere near my FTP yet. Okay. Well, <laughs> I think let's just get you let's get you riding now. Okay. I want to see what you look like. I hope that's not his most aero. Looks like he's going to the shops. A good thing to do as well. I mean, people can go to wind tunnels and stuff, but a great way to actually test how aero you are and get a good idea about it is to just get someone to film you, either on the turbo or just riding like this. Because I guarantee you're going to learn a lesson which Sai's about to learn right now. On a scale of one to ten, how aero is that? Going to the shops? This is zero. <laughs> no, no, no. It wasn't too bad. I'm only joking. But this is the classic thing. People, when people get the idea that you're supposed to scrunch yourself up and make yourself small to the wind, yeah. and they ride along and they think they're being aero, but the important reason why you should get someone to film you doing it is because the classic thing is people are never as aero as they think. You know, people often get an event photo back when they've done a race or something, and they think, God, I didn't know I was sat that far upright. It feels like you're like this, but you're actually like this. Um, so you, you need to get quite a bit lower on the bike if you can. And the main thing is head position. Okay. Yeah. And, he, and it's something that time trialists really focus on is getting in something that's quite uncomfortable, but you only have to do it for hopefully 19 minutes. <laughs> um, but you know, you want to get your head and, and really scrunch it in and then roll your shoulders in and then get your head like scrunched in. Like it feel, you want to feel like you're a turtle, okay. like a turtle's head just emerging. <laughs> from the shell. <laughs> I don't want to think about tail heads emerging, Ollie. Can we have another? Can we have another? <laughs> oh, God, right, okay. Okay, and then hands off the drops. Yep. You know, routinely we see in wind tunnels that the hands in the aero hoods position yeah. is faster. It can be harder to maintain, Yeah. but you, you only have to do it for 19 minutes. So okay. just engage your core, get so, in that position. So turtle head. Yeah. I mean, I need to be able to see where I'm going. We saw that with the Danish the men's Danish, team pursuit yeah. team, that that's important. So you, you don't, you, you need to sort of, what you might find is you're periodically sort of looking up. This is something you see Remco Evenepoel do a lot, where he's sort of really head down focused on that position and occasionally just sort of looking up sort of every few seconds just to check that he is safe. What you find is that sometimes when people actually get onto the road, they, even though they know to hold their head low, again, their head comes up like the sort of conning tower of a submarine, and that is bad. You need, <laughs> head is the most important thing, get the head low. The helmet you've got is good. Turtle, not submarine. Yeah. All right, let's give it a go. That looks good, doesn't it? Can't you see his head? He looks a lot better now. You can't even, you can't even see his head from behind. But uh, yeah, he's nice and low. Be interesting to see how he finds getting the power out now. That looks good. So that was 30 seconds. Yeah, how'd that feel? Really uncomfortable. Yeah, it's difficult. That's the challenge, is like getting the power out in that position. Because I've been training to boost my FTP, but in actual fact, I should have been sat on the sofa, like, hunching up. Yeah, this is the thing, though. It's what you've got to remember is that being in that position is so much more aerodynamic that even if you were to sit upright on your bike and crank out, you know, 30 more watts by being sat in a comfortable position, you're still going to go slower. So you're better off, even if you produce a bit less power, to go as fast as possible. Okay. Scrunching it. All right. So firstly, did that one look all right? Yeah, you look good. Okay, cool. And then, uh, and then, what are the penalties then? So let's say I'm, I'm in my turtle head position. Mm. And then, like, let's say I'm getting tired and so I have my head up. How many watts is that going to cost me? It's, well, it's hard to put a number on it without actually testing it, but it's, it's, it's going to cost you, it's going to be, you're going to be, think of it as I'm losing time every time I do that. Okay. And so 
you, you've, it's going to be close. I've, done, I've run the numbers, Go I've on. done some calculations, Go on. and I think it is possible for you to ride a 19 on, on, on the course that we've planned. But it, it came out as 1955 in my modelling. So, and that was with a good head? That's with a, a turtle head. <laughs> so if I manage a full turtle head yeah. for 19 minutes, 55 seconds, I can probably do it. But if I, if I put my head up to breathe or look around... And around 370 watts. 370. So that's, that's, that's giving you a, a drag coefficient, for those who are nerds and interested, of around 0.22. Okay. So on a, that's really good, because for a TT bike, you know, it was commonplace for pro riders on TT bikes 15 years ago to have drag coefficients of 2-1, even 10 years ago, 2-1. So you're pretty much as good as a TT bike. You probably would be competitive against TT bikes, you know, 20 years ago. Yeah. At the tour. Okay. <laughs> All right, mate. Well, thank you very much. I've got to say, I'm feeling the pressure now. On paper, having told you that I reckon I can do 370 on a good day, that I basically I, I should be able to do it now, just as long as I can assume the position for long mm. enough. Yeah. And just take the pain. It's it's going to be about pain. Also, the good thing is, is looking at the course conditions you got tomorrow. It's going to be about flat pacing. Sometimes pacing a TT can be tricky. Yeah. But this course is pretty flat, and the wind is very low. So you've got good conditions. It's just a case of going out there, holding it, and get up to speed right at 370 watts. Just aim to hold 370 watts. Sounds simple. Thanks, mate. Here we go then, just over 24 hours later, barely enough time to shave my legs. That's my excuse anyway for missing some bits. Um, but here we go. The calm evening that Ollie promised hasn't completely materialized. There's a bit of wind, but mainly it's this serious threat of rain that's slightly concerning me. I'm not entirely sure whether that will make a difference. Ollie reassures me, he says the air pressure is low, which is a very good thing, and that I should stick to my pacing strategy, that flat pacing strategy, remember, that's based on an exceedingly loose estimation of my FTP. But uh, at least I've got all the gear. Check out this weapon, Pinarello F12. I've got super deep vision Metron 81 SL wheels on there. I've got Aero Wahoo Speedplay pedals. I've got a chain that's been optimized by Muckoff. The only slight downside is there's a massive sticker on the top tube that says Bridgewood, which uh, hopefully won't hold me back too much. Uh, now, Nopins, who supplied Ollie with his super fast skin suits for his TT adventures, uh, also do a road range. I'm sporting their Pro One Road skin suit, which takes all the tech and all the fit from those time trial skin suits, uh, but adds a few features for all day comfort. I mean, you can use it in road race as well. Notably, pockets to keep your nutrition in, which, uh, which I'm not actually going to be needing tonight, but uh, it's in keeping with the spirit of the event. I'm sure you'll agree. Um, as Ollie mentioned, I've also got Aero socks on, which uh, well, now I'm wearing, I've got to say, I do really like, so I'm going to eat my words on that. Say aero socks, get the thumbs up as far as I'm concerned these days. Last piece of the puzzle is a Giro aero road helmet. This is the Vanquish, complete with visor. Um, now, that was a super fast rundown of my equipment. If you want to see more, we've got a look over on the tech channel where we're going to some more details and explain some of the choices that we've made. But, uh, but yeah, that's it for now. I've got to go get warmed up. It's raining, it's starting to rain. Ah! I'm not gonna lie, I'm probably nervous now. This is the start line. It's a proper, like, fast course, as you can tell, it's on a busy old road. I've managed to avoid doing one of these for 29 years of bike racing. And I um, thought I've got away with it, but here I am, age 38 feeling like a junior again, waiting for 20 minutes of exquisite agony. Hopefully 20 minutes. Could be, could be 21, 22. Thank you. Me? 
30 seconds. Thank you, USA. Thank you very much. How much of a pushy yeah. one in what? Massive. <laughs> <laughs> Something like Chris Hoy could do. Five, four, three, two, one. What, ta uh, what time did he get? <laughs> oh my word. Oh, that is a roller coaster of emotions. So for some reason I decided in my wisdom last minute I was gonna ride that blind. So I had distance and cadence on there. I set off and I was like, wow, I am going well. Like, don't get me wrong, this feels quick. And after about two minutes, I was like, oh, Maybe I've just gone a little bit hard, like my legs are a bit sore, so I kind of settled in. Five minutes in, I was like, I don't know how I'm gonna do this. And unfortunately, there's a little bit of downhill towards the turn. And I remembered something, I don't want to name drop here, but a video we shot with David Miller years ago, and he was saying it's all about speed. And so I was like, right, so I got up to speed for this descent, and then I had a little rest, a rest around the turn. And then I started coming back, and I kind of had another couple of little ups and downs, but, I don't know, I got it all out, but... Do you want to know what time you did? It's yeah, I think I got, I got relatively close, I reckon. Go on. 20 minutes and two seconds. Ah! Ah! 20 minutes and two! Ah! 20 minutes and two. I'm going to demand a recount. Someone, <laughs> someone... Oh, Sake. <laughs> oh. Do you know what the worst thing about that is? I'm gonna have to go and do one again. Like there's no, there's no escape in that. Twenty minutes and two. You know they say fourth place is the worst place to come at the Olympics. I feel like I've just come fourth. Oh. <laughs> Twenty minutes and two. Well. The dust has settled a little bit. Still slightly annoyed, it's got to be said, but actually, I'm quite pleased as well. It's pretty close that, isn't it? It's, you know, nearly 30 mile an hour and it's probably 47.9 k's an hour, which sounds much better. So I'll take it um, and probably come back next week to see if I can better it and go down the slippery slope of becoming a time trialist. But uh, there we go. Anyway. Big thank you, firstly to Ollie, actually, for, for all that amazing know-how, getting the bike sorted with all that kit. As I said earlier, there's gonna be a video over on the Tech Channel now if you wanna geek out on that. And then secondly, a big thanks to Nopins as well for not only providing that super fast skin suit, but also giving me the excuse to make this video, do my first proper time trial in 29 years of bike racing. There we go. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, like I have, please give it a big thumbs up.